Morning, everybody. Pastor Chamian here with Victorious Life Christian Center, and we are excited to be here before you again today. And for those of us who are in the building, uh, we just want to give God glory and and praise and, and let him know how good he is. And we thank God to be in our right minds today. We thank God to be healthy. We thank God to have a right to worship, to be able to open our mouths and to give him the praise, honor and glory that he deserves. And so I'm excited today to come before you to bring a message of encouragement and hope. And I just want to say a quick prayer uh, to our father to just allow him to have his way and to use me today. So, Father God, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for who you are. I thank you, God, for your faithfulness to speak to me, to speak through me to your people, Father God. I thank you that it is a privilege and an honor to be used by you. I thank you for everyone in this place who uses their gifts, Father God, in, in whatever capacity they do for your kingdom, Father God. I thank you that you don't have to be in a pulpit to be a minister and to be used by God, but that our ministry is wherever you have given us influence starting in our household. So God, I ask that you would have your way today. I pray that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are open to receiving from you, Father God. Please allow me to speak this message with passion, purpose, and power in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I've learned in life that, man, vision is so important. You know, when you wake up and you open your eyes and, and you're able to look out and see, I think it's so easy to take that for granted because it just seems automatic you know we we wake up and you know if you sleep on a certain side of the bed you you probably have the same routine probably the same foot touches the floor every morning first um you brush your teeth with a certain hand and you put a certain sock on first and a certain pants leg um in your pants first and you're you're on autopilot you're not even thinking about that until something happens that throws your routine off. You know, I remember one time when I was in college and uh, I had a, I had a security job. I was a playing football and I had a nighttime security job and I was studying late one night, uh, preparing for a test. And I was so tired to the point where I fell asleep. And when I finally awoke, I could not see. My vision was absolutely blurry. I mean, I could see to the point where I saw light and I knew things were there, but my vision was so blurry that I could not see anything clearly. And wow, was I afraid. That was the first time in my life that had ever happened to me. I didn't know what was going on. All I know was I could see and I woke up and I could no longer see. And that was a scary feeling. You know, I think I was about 18, 19 years old. And so at that time, you know, hopefully this doesn't date me too bad. But there were pay phones at that time. I didn't have a cell phone at that time. And so I knew enough to get to the pay phone. I had to find some change to put in the pay phone. It's not like with your cell phone. See, we take those things for granted that you could just pull this thing out and Man, make a call anywhere in the world. So I put change in this machine and, you know, you've dialed numbers so many times that you know where the numbers are. And so even though I couldn't see, I knew where the numbers were and I called my mama. And thank goodness my mama picked up the phone and I said, I said, mama, I was studying and I fell asleep and I woke up and mom, I cannot see. And she was like, calm down, son. Everything's OK. She said, probably your eyes are just strained. And you know what? Because I had a relationship with her. I, I was willing to listen to what she was telling me to do. And so she said, son, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go home and just get some rest and call me in the morning. 
And I said, okay, mama, I'm going to listen to you. And, and I was nervous. My heart was beating. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to trust my mom. Why, why was I going to trust what she said? Because we had a relationship. And I knew that she loved me. And I knew that she would never give me any advice to hurt me or to harm me, only to put me in the best position possible in my life so that I could succeed in whatever I did. So I went home, man, I, I went to sleep. And let me tell you, when I woke up in the morning, I opened my eyes and I could see, hallelujah, I could see. And I was so thankful to God. And I called my mom and I was like, mama, I can see. And she was like, I told you, son, your eyes were just strained and you needed rest. Man, I, I want to tell you what, what we're going to talk about. It's important why I told you that little story and your ability to see because your perspective on life will determine how you see life. And so the message for today is called, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? And when I'm speaking that, I'm not saying, do you see what Pastor Chase sees? I'm saying, do you see what God sees? You know, the question that I want you to ask yourself today is, do you see yourself the way that God sees you? Wow. Do you have godly vision for yourself? Do you understand who you are in God? Why he sees you the way that he does? And, you know, I hope that today I'm able to reveal those things to you. I'm hopeful that today I will give you some encouragement and some things that will allow you to be able to see yourself the way that God sees you you know it all starts in in genesis in genesis uh chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 the bible says then god said let us make mankind in our image in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created them male and female. He created them. Wow. That I know that's a mouthful, but it's very powerful scripture that I just read to you. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Now, what is the, the importance of this? Now, first of all, we're talking about do you see what God sees? This scripture tells us that God who was in relationship with himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, was having a conversation with himself. And he said, let us make mankind in our image like us. Now, first of all, God is a spirit, right? So he didn't say, let us make him look exactly like us. But he said, let us make them in our image. What does that mean with the ingredients that's in us? With the power that is in us. With the dominion that we have. And so once he speaks it. Because whatever God speaks comes into existence. So God speaks that we are going to be like him. We're going to have the ingredients that God has. Man, I hope wherever you are right now. Whether you're by yourself or or you are next to somebody, you should look at yourself in the mirror or look at your neighbor and say, I got the right stuff in me. I got the right ingredients in me because I'm made in God's image. Come on, we're talking about seeing ourselves the way that God sees us. So once he goes on to say what 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 he wants us to have, how he wants to create us, how he wants to make us in his image and his likeness. 
Then he goes on to tell us what we have the authority to do. Oh my goodness. Listen, until you begin to see yourself the way that God sees you, you don't even know what you're capable of. And that's the reason why so many people are dealing with self-doubt and insecurity and brokenness and wrong thinking. You know, Pastor Nate, our wonderful senior pastor, always tells us you got to get rid of that stinking thinking. You got to get rid of those things that come into your mind. You got to take every thought under captivity that tries to come against the word of God. And you have to be able to speak the word over yourself. The word, the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Somebody needs to be brainwashed today. Now I know what you say. Oh my gosh. What do you mean brainwashed? Your mind needs to be cleansed. You need your mind washed. You need your mind to bathe in God's word in his presence to meditate on his scriptures day and night to the point where it becomes who you are to the point where when people try to tell you that you're not you say man i know who god says i am i know who god says i am and so in this scripture 26 and 27 after he tells us that, that he makes us in his image and his likeness, he begins to tell us what we have the authority to do. And he said, so they may rule, wow, rule. On earth, we've been given authority to rule. Now, first of all, I want you to understand a key ingredient to seeing yourself the way that God does, you have to recognize that you have the power to speak things into existence you may say well how, how do i know i have that authority because he said he said let us make mankind in our image in our likeness whatever god can do we can do he's put listen god is christ in us the hope of glory i didn't say whatever god could do chamian could do what what i'm saying is whatever god can do because god is in me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is nothing impossible for those that believe. And if you have God on the inside of you, there is nothing that you're not capable of. So he says, so they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock, all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. You know, to me, that means everything else that lives, we have dominion over them. We rule, we are in charge. That's why we have animals that we use for farming and, and for pets and why. We have dominion over them. I never seen a dog cook a meal for me but I know that my wife and I, we have a dog and we take very great care of that dog. Why? Because we have dominion over the dog. We are to take care of the dog. And then God goes on to say, so God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created them male and female. He created them. And, and so, first of all, in our spirit, there is no male and female right it is mankind and i won't even go into that because that's a totally different message but i just felt like in order to start this message off right and to help you understand how to see yourself the way that god sees you you have to understand how you were created you have to understand how god sees you now now just think about this you know i I think a little bit outside the box and, you know, maybe I learned this from Pastor Nate, but as I think about the word, I'm thinking, okay, so God, the creator of the whole universe, he thought enough about me to put himself in me. Man, so first of all, 
a, a, another point, you know, if you want to call it a second point to understanding how to see yourself the way that God sees you, you got to understand that you have a purpose. I mean, there's over 7 billion people on this earth and you're one of them. Man, how many babies passed away before they even got here? How many things got in the way of, of certain people being born, but, but you made it. Now, I don't want to be graphic, but if we know how life is created from a male and a female, there's over 500 billion, uh, 500 million, I believe, sperm that are all going towards the same egg. I mean, they're in there scrapping. You know what I'm saying? If you know the, re the, the, the woman's reproductive system, that egg has to, has to travel and, and find its way in there. And there's 500 million scrapping and one of them makes it. Man, if you don't have a reason to be excited because so many people trying to play the lotto in life so they can win money. But I want to tell you, you being here is the lotto. You are the Powerball. <laughs> you made it. And so for God to handpick you and to put his ingredients, his image and his likeness in you and for you to make it on this earth while wow, there is something that God needs you to do. I would say the third thing you need to realize in order to see yourself the way that God sees you is to know this. God needs you. God needs you. Why? Because there's something that only you can do. Something that only you can do. And you know what the greatest purpose in your life is? To discover what that is. I think the greatest tragedy in life is to live your whole life and never do what you were put here to do. To live your whole life with a bunch of potential. You know, another thing that Pastor Nate, you know, has taught me and, and taught the church is the richest place in the world is the graveyard. When he first said that, it blew my mind because I was like, what? Why would the graveyard be the richest place in the world? And, and what he said next was so profound. He said, because that's where all the untapped potential lays. That's where all the dreams and ideas that you never tried, that never came to pass, that's where they lay. That's where the cure for cancer might be because somebody was too afraid to step out on the ideas or whatever it was that God put in them to give to the world, to use for his glory. You know, I would say the fourth thing that you need to recognize to understand how to see yourself the way that God sees you is to recognize that God not only needs you, but he wants you. Oh, man. You may say, what? God wants me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why does he want you? Because you're handmade. You're handmade. You know, I, I think about, you know, in my life, I know my mom, I think she crochets and there's other people in my family that knit and crochet. And I remember when I was young, my mom used to make these little booties for your feet, like kind of like house shoes. And, you know, it's the yarn that it takes to make those things. It's not like it costs a lot of money. But when you receive a gift like that, it's handmade. You know, Pastor Nate, one time for Christmas, he made me this thing out of wood that you can sit your phone in and, and turn your music on and it will amplify your music. And there's no mechanical parts in it. It's it's only made out of wood. And and I don't know how much the wood costs, probably not a lot, but it sits on my nightstand. And when I look at it, I think about Pastor Nate because he handmade that for me. He handmade that for me. Um, Pastor Nate gave me a staff. I have a staff at the house. Oh, man, I, I really 
you know, I, I, I enjoy this staff because he made it for me. He, he lacquered the staff and he painted my favorite scripture all the way down the staff and put a lion's head on the staff. Why does it mean so much to me? Because it was handmade. And all I'm saying to you is you were handmade. God put you together inside of your mother's womb with a purpose with a purpose you know when when mary was pregnant with with jesus and she went to go see her cousin uh what, what was john the Baptist? elizabeth and elizabeth was pregnant the baby inside elizabeth leaped because it knew what was inside of mary it knew that the savior of the world was inside and, and, and so it left. What I, what I want to tell you is there should be some excitement about the fact that God allowed you to be birthed into the world. If Jesus came into the world with a purpose, why not you? Why not you? Now, the beautiful thing is I don't even think God is calling us to do what Jesus did. We, we couldn't fulfill that. But I thank God that he's got something for us to do, something for me to do. You know, when when I am here right now speaking this word to you and and trying to impart truth into your life, I'm walking in my purpose. I'm doing what God has called me to do. And I want you to understand that you don't have to be up front or seen in front of everybody to do what God calls you to do. You know, the Bible says that obedience is greater than sacrifice. That all God wants you to do is walk in the truth that has been revealed to you right now. And that as you do that, that God will continue to reveal the next step. You know, the word of God says that God is a light unto our path. You know, many times in God, when we're talking about vision, God is the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, which means he knows all. He's seen the whole story. But for us, many times, God only allows us to see so far. Why is that? Because he wants to keep us dependent on him. For some of us, if you could see everything that God saw, you might try to derail the plan. So God gives you enough light onto your path for you to just take another step of faith. The Bible says that if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. So what is God saying? Just come to me. You know, I think about uh, when, when babies, you know, begin to start walking and when they first wobbly get up on their feet and as parents, we're like, come on, come on. First thing we do is we hold their little hands with our fingers and try to guide them. And then when we feel like they're doing that, we take that away and try to see if they could just take one. And then we grab, them. oh, good job, baby, good job. And that's how God is with us. Wow, thank you, son or daughter. You took that step. You believed that even if you failed, that I would catch you. You're beginning to see yourself the way that I see you. To see, for us to see God the way he wants to be seen. As a good father. Not as somebody who sits on high above the universe and is looking down on how he can pummel and punish us. You know, pastor always said too, I mean, if the devil is against you and God is against you, you might as well chalk it in right now. Because you don't have a shot, right? Do you see yourself the way that God sees you? And so the story that, you know, I want to talk about to relay this, this is going to be a beautiful passage of scripture, is I want to talk about Gideon today. Wonderful story, um, you know, Judges chapter 6, and I'll, I'll just kind of paraphrase the beginning part, um, and then the 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 parts of scripture that we'll really dig into the meat is going to be verses 11 
through 16. And so in this book of Judges, um, the people of God, they were in a land where they had begun to worship idols and, and do things against God. And so God released his protection from them for seven years. And the Midianites and the Eastern peoples would raid them when they grew their crops and everything. It's like every year they would come in at a certain time with just camels and, and, and all of their people as far as the eye could see like locusts and just take all their stuff and just destroy stuff and kill their animals and just just for no reason it's kind of like just punking people let's i could see them just like yes yeah, that time of the year let's roll on up here and and beat these boys down you know what i'm saying just big bully and so um we get to the point where we get to verse 11 and uh in verse 11 let me get there the angel of the lord came and sat down under the oak in ophrah that belonged to joash the abizarite where his son gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. So first thing I want you to understand about this scenario. God's people knew that the Midianites and the Eastern peoples were coming every year to raid their crops and everything. And so what they did was they started building caves and strongholds in the mountains. So that they could hide away and hide the little bit of stuff that they did have because they knew the rest of the stuff was going to get destroyed. And so here we have in verse 11, we got Gideon threshing wheat in a wine press. Now, I want you to understand the wine press was not made for the wheat. OK, the wine press was made for the grapes so that you could get the wine. But he was so afraid of losing what he had that he had to hide it in the wine press to keep it away. I'm trying to show you that he didn't know who he was yet. He didn't see himself yet the way that God saw him. OK. In verse 12, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We'll we'll get we'll come back to that. But the angel ran up on Gideon under that tree and said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Man, I just want to ask you a question. Have have you ever been in a situation in your life? Maybe you were nervous. Maybe you were scared and somebody was talking to you. Maybe they didn't know what was going on in your life and they were just speaking to you as if everything was good and and you were just such a blessing and man you're such you're so strong and you're just an image of 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 success and confidence and you're thinking oh my god that's what you see because i don't feel that way and i imagine that's how gideon was feeling and so what did gideon say in verse 13 he said pardon me pardon me my lord gideon replied but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. And you know what? As I thought about that. You know, I think it's so easy for us to read scripture and kind of be like, man, Gideon was tripping. Like, why was he thinking like, where's the Lord? But how many times have we felt like that? I know that I've been in places in my life before where I felt like, man, does God hear the prayers that I'm praying? Am I all alone? Like, is he going to turn it around? 
You know, I, I don't feel very confident right now. I'm holding on to the word, though. At least I'm holding on to my faith. Let me tell you something. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you have to lose in life, don't ever lose your faith. That's the most important thing that we have is our faith. Without that, we don't have nothing. And so he's basically saying, where's God at? I don't see him. These people have been, been raiding us every single year. And I've heard all the stories about how God brought them out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And, you know, was taking them to the promised land and all of these good things. But where is he now? What have you done for me lately? Doom, 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 doom. Ooh, yeah. Anybody felt like that? Man, I know he did some stuff back then, but you know what? We're always focused on the now. Because you know what? Yesterday's blessing can't hold you for today. Yesterday's anointing is not enough for you today. That's why every day you need a fresh anointing. The Bible says he takes us from faith to faith, glory to glory. What does faith to faith and glory to glory speak? It means he's always moving us forward. He doesn't have us stuck in the past. Now, the reason why we have the word is we need to remember. I didn't say forget the past. Remember the past, but don't live in the past. Because the past cannot sustain your future. Amen. And so we go to verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? That sounds like a command to me. So the angel of the Lord runs up on Gideon, calls him a mighty warrior. Gideon is like, is you really talking to me? Because I, you know, pretty much what he's getting ready to say is like, I'm like the least in my family, right? But the angel of the Lord gives him a command. Go in the strength you have. Listen, some of you may just feel like I only got a little bit of strength. I'm trying to encourage you today to go with the little bit you do have. Right actions always lead to right emotions. If you use the strength you have, you'll get some more. You know, I, I like to work out. And I'm going to tell you something. When you first start working out or if you have worked out before and taken a long break and some of you due to this whole pandemic thing, haven't worked out for a while. And I promise when you get back, you will not be as strong as you were before you stopped. But what I do know is this. If you get in there and face the resistance with the little bit of strength that you do have, how many people know that your strength is going to increase? Man. So Gideon says again, after the Lord tells him to go with the strength that he does have. Gideon says, pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. Now, first of all, here's what I want you to understand. There is a way that God sees Gideon and there is a way that Gideon sees himself. And what we're trying to do is bridge that gap so you can begin to see yourself the way that God sees you. So God is telling him what who he is, a warrior, and what he can do, save Israel. But what does Gideon say? What he's not. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Basically saying, my people, I'm the weakest of my people, and, and, I'm, the, and I'm the weakling in my family. And you're telling me I can save Israel. So now I keep telling you, it's like a back and forth. God saying who you are and what you can do. Gideon saying who I am, I'm, who he's not and what he can and can't do. And so the Lord answers, I will be with you. Oh, man. Oh, man. The Lord says to him, 
I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. So what does God do again? God does not. It's like God does not even listen to what Gideon is saying if it does not line up with who God said he is. So God tells him, I will be with you. You know that the word of God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God will never put you in a situation that he has not prepared you for. God will never put you in a situation that he has not given you the right stuff to make it happen. You know, I, I, I did a, a teaching, you know, some years ago called the right tools make a difference. Man, it pays to use the right stuff. I mean, it's hard to try to hammer a nail with a screwdriver. I'm just saying, even if, if you end up being successful, it's going to take you a long time to get one in. You need the right stuff. Thank God that he equips us with the right stuff. So here's what Gideon says. Gideon said he finally begins to receive. He said, and this is verse 17, and I'll stop after that. He says, Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. So now, I mean, obviously he was talking to him. You're having a conversation. But what Gideon is saying now is, OK, I'm beginning to hear what you're saying and I want to overcome my fear. But I need you to show me something to make sure that it's really you. Anybody ever, I mean, has anybody ever asked God for a sign? Like to show me something? Because you know there's a move that, that it's been on your heart to make or something you've been wanting to try or something you've been needing to do and you've been facing that, that fear monster, that doubt monster on the inside. And so you ask God, man, God, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm hearing you tell me this because it keeps being confirmed. But can you just do this to make sure that I know? And so Gideon went on to ask God for some signs and God showed him the signs. And so now Gideon was on board to go do what God called him to do. I hope I hope that that passage of scripture blessed you because it, it really blessed me as I was creating this message. I'm sorry. Give me a moment. I know what God's telling me to do. I need a tablet, y'all. I need a, I need a tablet. <laughs> amen. Amen. So what I want you to take away from this portion of scripture is this. The Lord never speaks to who you think you are only to what he's called you to be. Oh, man. God will never speak to who you think you are only to who, you, who he's called you to be. Why is that? Because if we go back to Genesis 1, and 27, he said, let us create man in our image and our likeness. So what does God know? God knows that he already put the right stuff in you. He knows what's in you. God has hand knitted your DNA. He knows that you have the right stuff, so he will never speak at the level of your doubts and your fears and lack and insecurity. He will always speak life and light and encouragement and belief. Why? Because that is his image and his likeness. God cannot speak against himself. He put you in him. Your, his name's on you. When we talked about that, one of the things in order to see yourself the way that God does, and I told you that God needs you. Why does God need you? Because he put his name on you. He put himself inside of you. So if you are not successful, it's bad business for him. Now, we were created for God to be glorified. So God's going to equip you to succeed at whatever he puts your hand to do because it's good for his glory. Come on. So I hope you're at home shouting. I didn't say it's good for my glory. The Bible says 
if God be lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. He didn't say if Chamian be lifted up. Now, here's what I want you to understand. If I choose to grab a hold of who God says I am and glorify him wherever I go, he will elevate me. He will promote me. It doesn't matter about your degree, what you don't have, what you do have. He will elevate you. Why? Because it's for his glory. God is the ultimate leader. And leadership is one thing, influence. Oh, man. So if God lives in you and you represent him proudly, he will allow you to impact and influence the lives of other people to help them see themselves the way that he sees them. That's my that's the whole point of what I'm trying to do today is help you to get rid of your stinking thinking. Stop speaking negatively about yourself. When you make a mistake, stop saying, man, I'm stupid. No, you're not. The image and likeness of God is in you. God is not stupid. I can't do it. Stop saying that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, you got to speak the word over yourself. So I want to ask you today, what has God called you to do that you fear you aren't equipped for or that you are shying away from? What is in your hand? What little bit of strength do you have? Bible says all you need is a mustard seed of faith. If you just use the little bit, I promise more will come. Because let's just think about this. What is the point in giving you more of anything that you aren't using? Now, my wife and I were just talking about this on, on the way here. I need to take a vacation just so I can go through my house and my garage and get rid of stuff. Excuse me. I don't know how it happens, but over time, we just accumulate more and more. You know what? It seems like people always want to give me something. And I have to, I have to, I'm at a point in my life and, and listen, I'm not against receiving, but I'm just saying, I don't, there's some stuff I don't need. Go give it to somebody else. Like I, I got too much. I need to give some stuff away. And I just want to tell you, stop holding on to all that old stuff that you got in your life that you haven't used for 5, 10, 15 years that's just collecting dust and go give it to somebody who can use it. Or what's the point in giving you more? So to, so you could just stack up more? And before you know it, you won't even have no room to walk around. You got to let some stuff go, amen? You know, uh, uh, another ingredient to help you see yourself the way that God sees you is to be a giver. Wow. Why? Because when you give, you are being like God. When you give, it will allow people to see the love of God. Do you know there's somebody praying right now for a blessing or for some need that they have to be met? And do you know that God is waiting for you to be his hands and feet? So what is it that God has called you to do that you fear? What is it that you feel you aren't equipped with and that you are shying away from? God is saying, I'm a light unto your path, but I need you to take a step. What is the dream in your heart that you've been desiring and you're not taking any steps towards the dream? Have you even written your dream down? The importance of writing your dream down is now it makes it real. Because I don't even think you'll write down something you don't believe in. It's contrary to, to everything within you. It's hard. Do you know some people can only dream to the size of their paycheck? Man, I'm telling you, this is all about how God sees you. God is saying, don't let your paycheck stop you. Stop your dreams right there. You could dream beyond that. You know, when you were a kid and you didn't even have a paycheck yet, you had some dreams. And I guarantee some of them dreams cost a lot of money, but you wasn't even thinking about the money. You were just thinking about what you wanted to do. 
you wanted to travel the world you wanted to go here you wanted to go to school here you wanted to do these things and you wasn't worried about cost you was like i'm gonna figure it out but some point in life that excitement that that belief that you could do anything life begins to suck that away and that's why you got to get your eyes on god and allow him to speak into your life so you can see who you are i want to get ready to to shut down but i want to i want to give you some things i love application i love giving you things that you can apply to your life right away and so i want to give you seven verses to meditate on for godly confidence seven verses that you can meditate on to gain godly confidence i want you to see how much god loves you believes in you provides for you amen so Joshua chapter one, verse nine says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord. Your God will be with you wherever you go. Oh man. I want you to understand that you are never alone. I want you to understand that whatever, wherever you are right now, God is in the room. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, God is with you. And I don't care who you are on this earth. He sees you. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Man, I want to tell you something. When I came to the Lord and really submitted my life to God, it was a scary feeling. And, and, and I want to help you to understand the perspective of why it was scary for me. Because up until that point, I believed in me. My confidence was in me. In what I could do. In what I could make happen. If I wanted anything, I could go do it. That's how I felt. But when I came to God and I humbled myself. And the Lord Jesus Christ became the Lord of my life. The confidence that I had in Chamian went away. And I felt stripped and naked and bare because I didn't know how to do this thing. I didn't know how to walk in God. I didn't have a whole bunch of scriptures in my mouth. It was brand new. Why? Because I was born again. And I was wobbly. And I needed God to teach me how to walk. But man, I want to tell you today, I am so confident today, hear what I'm saying, in the God in me. Wow. I could do anything. Why? Because the God in me. I'm not afraid to talk about Jesus wherever I go. Why? Because of the God in me. I use everything that I do for him to be glorified. Why? Because God is in me me i know how he sees me i know why he made me i know who i am i know whose i am and i'm not afraid to move forward and do what god has called me to do because i see myself the way that he does psalm 139 verse 13 and 14 says for you created my inmost being you knit me together. I told you you were knitted together. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am, oh my goodness, fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Why do I know that full well? Because I'm one of his works. I'm one of God's works and I know that full well. Proverbs 3, verse 25 through 26, it says, Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked, for the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. I don't have to worry about the pandemic. I'm not worried about that. I'm not, I'm not worried about COVID. I'm not worried about anything. Why? Because the Lord is with you. God is with me. Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who hope 
in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. weary. They will walk and not be faint. God says, if you hope in me, I will give you all the strength that you need. If you keep your hope in me, if you look to the hills from which cometh your help, you're covered. I will renew you. I know you fell down, son, daughter, but you're you're falling forward. I'll pick you up. I'll dust you off. And and you'll keep going to where I've called you to go. Amen. And then lastly, my favorite scripture, the one that Pastor Nate painted on the staff that he made for me Proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths trust in God with all your heart you know trust is not about what you see faith is not about what you see Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I've never seen God with my eyes, but I know he's real. I've encountered him for myself. Nobody could take that from me. I know God. So when I can't see the way, I can trust in him that he will direct my path. I've seen it time and time again in my life. I've been going a certain direction in the strength that I did have. And God brought me, he, he turned it all the way around and brought me somewhere else. And I, and all I could do is say to you be the glory God. Thank you for, for ordering my steps. Amen. So I'm gonna close with, with this last scripture. Um, I was reading this this week during my devotional time and, and it really blessed me. It's Psalms 19 verse 14. Um, and, and, and this is a Psalm of David. And he said, let the words of my mouth. Oh, man. So I want you to understand the context and why I'm telling you this, because think about what I'm saying. Do you see yourself the way that God sees you? And David says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, man. What is he saying? God, I know you see me. I know you see me, God. I know you're watching. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I just want to break that down for you. So first of all, the words of my mouth, what is he saying? Because that's external. Let the things that come out of my mouth externally be pleasing to you God but here's what I want you to know the Bible also says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so he talks about the external but then he goes on to say and let the meditation of my heart now he's talking about the internal condition what he's saying is, is God, let the, let the whispers of my heart, let the motives of my heart, let the plots of my heart be pleasing in your sight, God. May I not even think about things that would hurt you, that would disrespect you, and I would tell you, guard what you let in. The Bible says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the well spring of life. And I promise that if you guard your heart and you allow the things of God to get in, you will only speak the things of God out and you will begin to see yourself the way that God sees you. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity today to be able to encourage your beautiful, wonderful people. And I hope today that somebody out there who's watching us in YouTube land, if you don't know God, I hope that today you are encouraged and excited to want to know him. Maybe you're afraid. Maybe you've been feeling so insecure and so broken. You know that God is in the business of putting broken things back together again. 
Wow, he's a good God. God, I pray that you would touch that person who needs to be mended and sculpted and shaped and put back together again. Allow them to encounter you the way that I have, to know you for myself, that nobody can take that relationship away, God. So we praise you today for being so good, so faithful, so worthy, Father God. And we just want our eyes, we just want our eyes to see the way that you see. And we want to look in the mirror and be able to say, you know what? Chamey and I love you. Chamey and I like you. I like who you're becoming. I like the fact that you're still growing. It's okay to speak highly of yourself when you're speaking God's word over yourself. Lord, I pray that all these things come to pass for your people and they will walk in godly confidence this day and moving forward. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen.